physical pendulum, very similar to a simple pendulum, but now we're going to think of it in terms of a rotational system. And so I have a stick here, drill the hole through it, and that's going to be its pivot point. Maybe I have it on a nail, and so it can swing back and forth like this. Anything can be a physical pendulum. And we define H to be the distance from the center to the rotation axis. And that should sound familiar to you because that is from the parallel axis theorem, the same H. So it's not height. So if we draw a free body diagram, we have a normal force at the nail. We have Mg at the center of mass. And if I sum the torques about the pivot point, about the nail, then normal force doesn't have a torque. And so the torque would be mg sine theta times h to the lever arm. So I just want the perpendicular component of the force, mg sine theta times the lever arm. And again, uh, for simple harmonic motion, we would want a restoring torque proportional to the displacement. Sine theta is not linear. It's not a proportional uh, function. And so we can invoke the small angle approximation, sine theta equals theta. So I can say torque is mgh times theta. So mgh is a collection of constants. So now I have a linear torque function for small theta. So torque on the y-axis, theta on the x-axis. I'd get a straight line for small angles, and the slope would be mgh y equals mx plus b, and so slope is mgh there. So if we use our generic period formula, the inertia, since it's a rotating system, would be the rotational inertia i, and the force constant would be the slope of our line mgh. So slope is the force constant, really you should call it a torque constant, so that is the equation of a physical pendulum and where it comes from. You can also use Newton's second law for rotation to come up with it. And we've been saying A is omega squared um, times x for a rotational system. Alpha is omega squared times theta. So I can put in what the torque is. And then I can put omega squared um, theta in for alpha. So I get this, and the theta goes, and I can solve for omega, set that equal to 2 pi over the period, and I get um, this equation. So a simple pendulum is really just a physical pendulum, and its rotational inertia would be mr squared, where r is the length of the pendulum, and then h is the distance from the rotation axis to the center. And so for a simple pendulum, that would be the length of the pendulum. So if I put that in to the period, I get the same thing we found out in our previous analysis. And so a, a simple pendulum's period can be obtained just by knowing how to deal with physical pendulums. But let's look at an example of a physical pendulum, very similar to the web assign problem. Uh, so we have a meter stick that we drill a hole. Uh, how far should the hole be drilled from the center so that it has a period of two and a half? Notice if we drill it through the center, there'd be no period. It'd just spin. Well, it'd be the period would be how fast you decided to spin it, so it's, it wouldn't have a set value. And so we have our equation, so now we're not trying to drive it, although you should be able to. Uh, it's not on the equation sheet for the AP test, so this is a good one to put in your calculator. And so we just need to solve this for um, distance h, right? And that's in the equation. And unfortunately, or fortunately, because we love the parallel axis theorem, we're going to need to use it. You need to always use it for a physical pendulum because it's always going to be rotating about a point off center. Otherwise, it won't oscillate back and forth. And so we know I is the rotational inertia about the center plus m h squared. And the rotational inertia of a rod about its center is 1 12th ml squared. And so we can put that into here. 
and we set the period equal to the given value two and a half seconds and then we can substitute our rotational inertia in for I and you can see the mass is going to cancel and L is one in this case it's a meter stick put in whatever the length is so now I got one twelfth plus eight squared and then I can put in nine point eight for G and so notice I have an eight squared term I have an H term and if I simplify I'm going to have a constant term and so I squared both sides and divided by, well, I divided by 2 pi and then squared both sides and got this. So it's just algebra. And then I get a quadratic where H is the unknown. And using the quadratic, I get two answers. They're both positive. So which one should I use? Well, it's a meter stick. This point is off the meter stick. And so this, this would be the one that I should use. Turns out if I were to hang it from a string so that the pivot point was this far from the center, uh, for a small angle, it would have a two and a half seconds.